All right, things are coming along quite nicely. In this video, what we're going to do is create our first UI view object. So, you know, design with iPhone applications revolve around uh, three different design patterns. Of those three, one of them is the model view controller design pattern. And obviously, the view objects that we construct, well, that's your view portion of the model view controller design pattern. So in the view, what we can do is add other views. Basically, we can create a hierarchy of views. Now, objects, uh, controls such as buttons, labels, believe it or not, somewhere along the line, they were once upon a time views. So even they are UI views are just, again, an extension of. But uh, Apple will tell you in their documentation that view objects are responsible for rendering content within its rectangular area and for responding to touch events in that area. And because of this dual behavior, uh, views are the primary mechanism for interaction with users in your application. So again, that's from the Apple documentation. Now, we, we're not in very realistic iPhone applications going to be creating uh, UI views and just sh shoving them in and putting everything in that. We're going to be making UI view controllers, which will house a UI view but they come with a lot of functionality that we can implement if we so choose. So they get notification on things like when the phone's been rotated or we get um, a, a phone call has come in or, or the user has uh, requested to exit out of the application. So we, we, get, we get some nice control available to us in a UI view controller. Uh, those are things that we're gonna take a look at a little bit later on. Like I said, we're just building up simple here. So uh, let's go ahead and get rocking with our label. Uh, for this, all we need to do is simply create. So I'm just going to push this guy on down, jump on up, and simply create a um, comment first. So create our label. And just as we did with the window, let's start out with UI view. And we're going to make a pointer. And this is going to, let's call it my view. Everything's going to be my view, my label, all sorts of stuff. So my view equals, and again, going to be nested message calls. First one is going to be UI view and Alec. And then we need to init. And once again, we need to initialize it with a frame. But we have one available for us. Or do we? Yeah, we do. Of course, we already made one up top called screen bounds. So let's go ahead and init with frame, let's jump over here and put in screen bounds, like such. So that gets it initialized because we want our view, this view here, to be the same size as our window. That only makes sense so that we can draw what will look like all over the window. So that we go ahead and put this guy in. Now here's the kicker. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send a message to my window. I'm gonna say window. I want to add a sub view. So this is how you take this view and you add it to your window. So you add it as a sub view. Once again, as I said a minute ago, we create a hierarchy of these views. So we're gonna add this in and look what it's looking for. It's looking for a view. So we're just gonna jump over here and we're gonna give it one. We're gonna give it my view. Beautiful. All right, so now that we have added that in, this is a very interesting thing to note. We can go ahead and release our reference with my view right here because by adding excuse me by adding this in inside the add sub view that guy basically bumps up the retain count and he's going to handle all that good stuff so we can go ahead and release our reference out here we no longer need it so just down here near the bottom because i will need a couple more references to it uh, for just a little bit of time uh, but down here near the bottom right before we make the window visible i am going to say my view now we're going to go ahead and release so we don't have to worry about you from inside of application did finish launching. All right, fantastic. So let's go ahead and compile save and let's go ahead and do a, um, a run. And what do we get? Ah, what well, do you know? It's transparent. Once again, we just see our gray windowed background, but there is a canvas on it. We can now do stuff with the canvas. And that is what I'd like to do now. Let's create a label. Let's put the label on here and have that label say something. So let's go ahead and jump out of our application, back over here into Xcode, and let's see. So we create, you know what? I can't believe that I actually did that. Create label, should have been create view. Wasn't creating a label. That, that there we go. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump down. You guys should have caught that. 
pull those up at that. So now let's go ahead and do a create label. So here we are with the real label, I promise. So again, we're going to come in here with a type of UI label, and we will call this guy my label, like such. And once again, uh, we're going to do the message uh, double uh, or the nested messaging. So UI label, Alec. And again, you probably never saw this coming, but we're going to do init with frame. So we need another frame to send this guy. So like I did earlier, I'm just simply going to come in here and in this off. Now, I know that is nothing more than a, a syntax error. That's OK. We're going to come back to it. Let's create a few local variables and then let's um, put that into our frame. This will make it a little bit easier to picture what's going on. So first thing is first, I'm going to make a CG float. Um, we'll call it X and we'll say X is zero. I'm going to make a CG float and this is going to be Y. Let's put him at zero. So we would expect this label to appear in the upper left hand corner. Let's then do a CG float and let's call this one width. So this will be the width of our label frame. And let's set it to like 200. And then let's do CG float and height. And let's set our height to something like 50. All right, fantastic. Now, let's just come over here and let's just construct this guy right on the fly. You've already seen this once. I'm just going to jump in and say CG rec make. And then let's jump over with, we have an X. We have a Y. We have a width and we have a height. Perfect. So there you go. That actually gives us a, uh, a frame and we have to have that frame. But this is interesting because we're going to go to define text in a minute that's in this and people working with other visual prototyping style um, environments, uh, programming languages slash IDEs, uh, are used to you drop down a label and the label is basically bordered in its frames kind of just hugging up to it. But this is a bit different. We've got the frame at the given size. We've given it with width and height and we're going to have our text inside it and we can take that text and we can tell it to a line left, a line right. We could tell the text to scale with it basically to shift its size and then we could give it a minimum value so that if for whatever reason this label was getting shrunk down, at some point it's going to go, whoa, whoa, I'm not going any smaller than that. And then it'll just get cut off. Uh, a bunch of interesting stuff that we can do. Uh, in the end, we're going to look at how we can take our label frame and make it snug up nice and tight and how we can do that simple, uh, simply in the uh, upcoming video. But right now, We've got this guy created. So here we are with this new object. We need to make sure that he's added, just like we did with our view. We took our view and we added it into the window. We need to take our label and add our label into the view because the view is the canvas in which we shall draw our beautiful user interface. So with that, I'm going to come in here and just send a message to my view. So this is why I did not release my view yet um, until, again, a little bit lower down so I can still access it here. So my view, again, we're going to add a sub view, and the sub view is simply my label. All right. So now that we have got that guy in place, I can immediately turn around right here and just say my label. Let's go ahead and release them so we don't have to worry about this. Just stay good with memory management here uh, because, once again, the add sub view did indeed bump up our retain count and it's going to handle that for us. So with just this little bit of stuff, let's just go ahead and do a uh, command S to uh, save and a command B. And you can see that it built it successfully. So let's just see what happens. Just If we run right now, what do we get? So command R, build and run, up. Ooh, we have something. We have a frame for our label. We also have something else. We can now see that 20 pixel discrepancy that I was talking about earlier biting us. I told this frame to be positioned at 0, 0. We would expect 0, 0 to be right here at the start of the window. Instead, it's offset by 20 pixels. And you can make out the 20 pixels. 20 pixels high for our status bar, and that's the same height as we've got right here. So we need to fix that real quick and make our frame snug up to the very top. So let's go ahead and exit out of the application. So, so far, everything's working beautifully. Now let's go ahead and come back up 
to where we had created our CG rect uh, local variable for screen bounds, let's create another one. So we're going to do another CG rect, and this time around we'll call this our window, because now we're dealing with the window. We want to be at zero, zero in the window, and earlier we were dealing with the whole screen. So our window bounds is going to be equal to, ready for this, wait for it, screen bounds. But wait a minute, now you've, you've got the exact same data, we're still going to have the same problem. I also want to go ahead and take this screen bounds and let's come and fix that. The problem is right here with our view when we created it with the frame, we create it with that 20 pixel problem in there. So let's just go ahead and come inside here and make sure that we use our window bounds. So that's all in place, but we need to fix window bounds. Window bounds needs to be reset if you want to think of it that way. So we could say, all right, let's take this window bounds and let's step inside. If I hit escape, as I said before, with these CG recs, you have an origin and you have a size. In this particular case, I am interested in the origin. So we'll say origin. And within the origin, I am interested specifically with Y. So what I'm going to do is say, look, take this and let's reset it to zero and call it a day. So by resetting that to zero with the window bounds and using window bounds for our view, everything's now aligned properly. So let's save, command R to build and go, and we are now flush with the top. So zero, zero is indeed the top leftmost corner of our application. Excellent. But we need some text. So let's go ahead and close this out and get some text going on. So how do we do that? It's very, very straightforward. So here is where we create, oh, that's the view. Here's where we create our label. Now what I'd like to do is jump down uh, before we add our uh, label in as a sub view for our my view view. Boy, that's confusing. Let's go ahead and set up some text on it. It's very straightforward. So my label dot text equals, and this takes an NS string object. So I'm just going to give it a, a literal right here as instead of a, a pointer to one. So we're just going to call this from ground up since we're designing this application from ground up. So by putting just that right there and command S, command R, we now have from ground up. You'll notice that we're left justified inside of our frame at the moment, which is fine. And we can again go in there and do alignments and all that stuff. But I'm not interested in doing that. I'm interested in making this frame square up nice and tight around my text. And then I want to take that frame and center it up in my view. And we're going to take a look at how we can enhance the label coming up in the next video. But before we wrap this video up, let's go ahead and take our view and create an instanced variable for it and a property for it. So you'll notice that as we're slowly progressing forward, I'm cleaning things up behind me, making these instanced variables, holding references to these objects, and I'm setting up the properties and also um, synthesizing their accessors. So let's go ahead and close this guy out, like such. So again, we're going to be picking on UI view. So let's jump up here to our header file. Come on down and UI view. And we were calling this my view. So let's just keep it consistent jumping down here to our properties and let's go ahead and set this up so again we've got a property that is being specified as non atomic uh, retain and let's go and close this off again it is a UI view and we were calling it my view fantastic so let's go ahead and do a command s to save that out jump back over to the implementation and then from inside the implementation a couple things i need to do number one let's do some synthesizing so we're going to jump up here to the top and i'm going to just come down here and say synthesize and this is the um my view like such the next thing is i'm going to jump all the way down here to our dialog and i need to make sure that i properly release that so my view is going to be released like such so I can take my view release right here and get rid of it because I'm about to get rid of the local creation of a view so let's go ahead and delete that guy out since he's been moved down here and then let's just simply go back to where we define or excuse me actually create instantiate the class right here and we no longer need to do this part all we need to do now is simply create it so here we are creating it and then the reference is being stored in the instanced variable my view that's it so with that 
again, Command S, and then we'll just do a Command R, and everything works exactly the same. But we're just we're cleaning things up. We'll be doing the same uh, for the label coming up at the end of, I believe, the next video. And then uh, from there, we'll see if we can push things a little bit further. But with that, uh, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. In the next video, what we'd like to do is see if we can make this a little bit fancier. Maybe talk about changing the font and maybe making it larger and making the frame tighten up and maybe making that nasty white background disappear and you know just making the whole thing nice. So that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, thanks a lot, guys.